Bill Ackman, founder and CEO of Pershing Square Capital Management, revealed in Wednesday evening that he purchased more than 3.1 million shares of Netflix following a steep sell-off in the streaming giant, making him a top 20 shareholder for the company. He is what people call an activist investor, a group of investors that like to buy a large position in companies and pressure management to take action to raise its stock price, often profiting from them. In today's video, we are going to take a look into Bill Ackman and his rise to become the next Warren Buffett. Ackman was raised in New York. His father David Ackman was a smart businessman and the chairman of a New York real estate financing firm, Ackman Ziff Real Estate Group. In 1988, he received a bachelor degree and later got an MBA from Harvard. After that, he made the decision to join the family business. But Ackman wanted more. He wants to build his own business empire that will surpass his father's. In 1992, Ackman founded the investment firm Gotham Partners with fellow Harvard graduate, focusing on small investments in public companies. In 1995, Ackman partnered with the insurance and real estate firm Acadia National to bid for Rockefeller Center, although they did not win the deal. This bid was so interesting that it attracted many big players, making Ackman's name and his firm to become popular among Wall Street elites. Three years later, Gotham had raised $500 million in assets. And for the upcoming years, he invested wisely and made exceptional returns for shareholders. And as the time passed by, a new opportunity came across. Now, hedge fund manager Bill Ackman made the trade of a lifetime when he bet on a default by Bonashore MBIA. Ackman researched MBIA in order to challenge Standard & Poor's AAA rating on its bonds. He argued that MBIA was legally restricted from trading billions of dollars of credit default swap protection, which MBIA had sold against various mortgage-backed securities and was using a second corporation called Lacrosse Financial Products to do so. Ackman bought credit default swaps against MBIA corporate debt and sold them for a large profit during the financial crisis of 2007-2008. As time goes by, his investment fund grew in size and returns, until a new tragedy struck. A real estate company got his attention. It was called Holwood Realty a real estate holding company that was massively undervalued by the market. He started to buy heavily into the company. And as the company's share price kept dropping, his investors got panic and wanted to get out. This forced Ackman to find a creative way to save his fund. And the solution came by making a deal with a man named Carl Icahn. He made a deal with Icahn to buy the shares of Hullwood Realty under the market price which Icon can use to sell later, when the stock price meets its real value. This gave Ackman a breathing room, for a while. In 2003, a controversy arose from Ackman and Carl Icon over a deal involving Hullwood Realty. The deal was done in a schmuck insurance arrangement, under which, if Icon were to sell the shares within three years, and made a profit of 10% or more, he and Ackman would split the proceeds in half. Icon paid $80 per share. In April 2004, a property trust acquired Hallwood, paying $136.16 per share. Under the terms of the contract, Icon owed Ackman $4.5 million. Icon refused to pay and sued Ackman. And after eight years of legal battle, Icon lost and was forced to pay the $4.5 million plus 9% interest per year to Bill Ackman. In 2004, with $54 million from his personal funds, and capital from his former business partner, Lacadia National, Ackman started Pershing Square Capital. In 2005, Ackman bought a significant share in Wendy's and successfully pressured it to sell its Tim Hortons donut chain. Wendy's agreed and spun off Tim Hortons through an IPO in 2006 and raised $670 million for Wendy's investors. This deal helped him to make a name for himself and spread the fund's name all over Wall Street. In December 2007, his fund held a 10% stake in Target Corporation, valued at $4.2 billion, through the purchase of stock and derivatives. On December 6, 2010, Ackman indicated he would finance a buyout of Barnes & Noble for $900 million. He also invested in McDonald and made huge profits which made him very popular at the time. In December 2012, Pershing Square Capital Management launched a new closed-end fund 
called Pershing Square Holdings, which raised $3 billion in an October 2014 with an IPO on Amsterdam's Euronext stock exchange. As a closed-end fund valued at $6.7 billion, the fund was designed as a permanent capital vehicle, from which investors would not be able to directly withdraw funds. In 2010, Ackman started buying J.C. Penney shares, paying an average of $22 for 18% of the company. And after two-year campaign to transform the department store, it failed, and he decided to sell out of the position. In August 27, 2013, Pershing Square hired Citigroup to liquidate the 39.1 million shares of a Texas-based department store chain. This bet resulted in a loss of approximately $500 million. In January 2015, LCH Investments named Ackman as one of the world's top 20 hedge fund managers. After Pershing Square delivered $4.5 billion in net gains for investors in 2014, bringing the fund's lifetime gains to $11.6 billion since its launch in 2004 to 2014. On April 27, 2016, Ackman, along with Valen Pharmaceutical CEO, J. Michael Pearson, and the company's former interim CEO, Howard Schiller, testified before the United States Senate Special Committee. Isopril was 2183 for 10 5 milliliter vials. Um, it's now $17,901. Look, it's something we'll discuss tomorrow. You will discuss dropping the price of Isopril to 3000 The testifying panel answered questions related to the committee's concerns about repercussions to patients and the health care system posed by Valance business model and controversial pricing practices. Ackman who invested was forced to sell his 27.2 million share position in Valand to the investment bank Jefferies for about $300 million in March 2017. It has been estimated that the total cost of the position was $4.6 billion. In December 2012, Ackman issued a research that was critical of Herbalife's multi-level marketing business model, calling it a pyramid scheme. Ackman disclosed that his hedge fund, Pershing Square Capital Management, sold short the company's stock, causing Herbalife's stock price to drop. At an investor conference in January 2013, the company released results of a Nielsen Research International survey, showing 73% of Herbalife distributors never intended to make money by reselling the product. Instead, they wanted to buy products at a discount for personal use. To make the distinction clear, the company announced that it would begin referring to these discount buyers as members rather than distributors. A few months after billionaire investor, Carl Icahn challenged by buying shares of Herbalife. As Icahn continued to buy Herbalife, the stock price continued to go up. By May 2013, Icahn owned 16.5% of the company. In 2014, Ackman spent $50 million on a public relations campaign against Herbalife, which was designed to hurt the company's stock price. Later, Congress decided to investigate Ackman's use of public relations and regulatory pressure in his short campaign. And it worked out in Ackman's favor. And by December 2, 2014, stock prices had fallen nearly 50% to $42.08 from high of $83.48. And finally on March 12, 2015, prosecutors in U.S. Attorney's Office and the FBI were investigating whether people hired by Ackman made false statements about Herbalife's business model. In March 2015, U.S. District Judge dismissed a suit filed by Herbalife investors, alleging the company is operating an illegal pyramid scheme. In response Herbalife stock rose approximately 13%. Herbalife and the FTC reached a settlement agreement in July 2016, ending the agency's investigation into the company. On the day of the settlement, Fortune estimated that Ackman lost $500 million. Ackman's position on Herbalife led to a discussion on live television. I really sort of had it with this guy, Ackman. He's like the crybaby in the schoolyard. He was like one of these little Jewish boys crying that the world was taking advantage of him. It's like in the old song, uh, you, you rue the day I ever met the guy. Favorite sign, something called schmuck insurance. I got to show my investors that I'm making money and all that crap that on Wall Street, if you want a friend, get a dog. There's a book about this whole story called Confidence Game, which is worth a read. We uh, in, that, in that we context, we were that, winding but... down the fund. What he called schmuck insurance, because Carl Icahn, unfortunately, does not have a good reputation. Stick with me, because this is important, and got a few more points to make. Stick with me for one more second. I mean, what he, he was a bully, okay? 
I was not in a very good place in my business. You know what, this guy's roadkill on the hedge fund highway. I'm never going to have to worry about this kid again. He's not going to even have the resources to sue me. Italian restaurant. You know. On November 22, 2013, Ackman admitted on Bloomberg Television that Pershing Square's open shore position in Herbalife was $400 million to $500 million in the red, but that he wouldn't be squeezed out and would hold the shore to the end of the earth. In November 2017, Ackman told Reuters that he had covered his short sell position, but would continue to bet against Herbalife using put options, with no more than 3% of Pershing Square's funds. And on February 28, 2018, Ackman lost. And forced to exit his near billion dollar bet against Herbalife after the company's stock price continued to rise. Ahead of the 2020 stock market crash, Ackman hedged Pershing Square's portfolio by purchase credit protection, ensuring the portfolio against steep market losses. I called the CEOs of a number of our companies, okay? Uh, and told them to my concerns, okay, the companies I'm, we're closest to, and to not to stop the buyback programs, <laughs> to husband resources, to, call, to pull down, draw down their credit lines, uh, because hell is coming, okay? And I, I felt, you know, it's really, I've never had this experience before in my life. The closest I had was the financial crisis where I'm saying, you know, things are coming, <laughs> bad stuff's coming. Um, but this was a, a feeling like I've never had like there's a tsunami coming, right? The tsunami's coming and you feel it in the air, right? The hedge was effective, generating $2.6 billion in less than one month. Ackman later received criticism for actively buying stocks at cheap prices in the companies he was warning about, for example, hotel stocks. Research published at the University of Oxford characterizes Ackman's activities with Canadian Pacific Railway as paradigmatic of engaged activism, which is longer term in nature with correlated benefits to the real economy and distinct from shorter term financial activism. Ackman has said that his most successful investments have always been controversial and that his first rule of activist investing is to make a bold call that nobody believes in. After weak performance in 2015 to 2018, Ackman told investors in January 2018 that he was going to go back to basics by cutting staffs, ending investor visits that were eating into his time, and hunkering down in the office to do research. As a result of these changes, his firm Pershing Square returned 58.1% in 2019, which Reuters says qualified it as one of the world's best performing hedge funds for 2019. With this, let's end the video. If you enjoyed what you were watching just now, then feel free to hit the like and subscribe button to help the channel out. With this, Business Wisdom, signing out.